Welcome to the On-Premise IT Roundtable podcast, the only show that dares to be both on topic and on location, or on premise and on premises. Each time we meet, we bring together IT luminaries to discuss a single concept. In this episode, our discussion is going to be that learning Kubernetes is a waste of time. But before we get started, let's meet who's on the panel today. Hi, I'm Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and NedInTheCloud.com for my blog. Hi, I'm Larry Smith. I'm at Mr. L.E. Smith JR on Twitter. I blog at EverythingShouldBeVirtual.com. I'm Joey D'Antoni, at jdanton on Twitter and joeydantoni.com for my blog. I'm Keith Townsend, at CTO Advisor on Twitter. TheCTOAdvisor.com is the blog. Great. So we're discussing Kubernetes today. In fact, everybody's discussing Kubernetes every day, it seems. Uh, you can't get away from it. It is becoming the preferred platform for new applications. But is it worth it for uh, IT operators to bother learn it? We're seeing so many services and turnkey platforms emerge that, you know, what's, what's the point? If my provider can give me something that I can just deploy, you know, on-premises, or I can just have my devs spin up something in the cloud that they just consume, is it, is it worth my time as an IT operator to learn this? Keith, I think you even wrote a blog about this at one point, didn't you? Blog, I think, a video, absolutely passionate about the topic, unless, and I even question that, unless it's, uh, Kubernetes is an essential part of you adding business value today, I wouldn't bother to even uh, do cube control, cube admin or whatever, it's just let somebody else do this. But I think you disagree, Ned, and why is that? I might have a contrary view. I think if, uh, you know, you shouldn't learn Kubernetes if you're planning to retire in the next four or five years. Just stay the course. It's going to be fine. Uh, but if you are planning to stick around in IT ops for any extended period of time, it will behoove you to at least understand the fundamentals of Kubernetes and have some idea of how to manipulate it. Now, I'm not saying you need to have deep expertise at like a Kelsey Hightower level. You don't have to be a luminary in the Kubernetes world to get by in IT ops, but I think you do need to have a basic understanding of the platform because in many ways it's becoming the platform for other platforms to be built upon. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you can, it's okay to have a basic understanding of it. Like I should, when I go to use AWS, I should have a basic understanding of the control panel. I shouldn't know how to consume something that I'm going to use. Mm. Kubernetes, I should be able to, I should know how to consume Kubernetes. Should I know how to manage Kubernetes? Not at all. You're, talk, you're talking from a base, like uh, deployment perspective. Uh, no, not even from deployment. I shouldn't know how to deploy Kubernetes. Like that, that, all you should care about is the application. The, so I'll, I'll no, not the application, but I should be able to be able to go to Kube Control and do some stuff in Kube Control. But as far as knowing what to do with uh, masters versus uh, clusters versus pods versus blah, 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 it I need containers, I need to deploy the containers, done. We're moving away from this. I made the same argument that you shouldn't learn vSphere right. today. And, and I would say, to my point, I'm kind of on both sides. Okay. That I do agree okay, with what Switzerland. you're saying. I do, <laughs> exactly. I do agree with what you're saying because, number one, Kubernetes deployments have become much easier over a period of time. However, I really don't care I do like to care if I'm a nerd, and I'm going to dig I'm deep valid. into the technology and understand it, which is good because then when I get to the solution where my provider is giving me the solution, I need to ensure that I'm getting a good solution. I, I think the, the hardware bits are, are, are completely irrelevant because most people are going to consume this in a cloud model. It's a very modern uh, technology solution, and, and it is challenging to deploy, from, especially when you're dealing with physical infrastructure. That's a lot more challenging. I can measure AWS, I can have a Kubernetes cluster in five minutes. But I think the important skill to really take away is that you need to be able to troubleshoot deployments and troubleshoot problems that exist, especially if you want to work, continue working in IT ops, because it is something you're going to have to deal with. Does that mean you have to have a master's level of understanding? No, but you need, you need to understand how to, how to look at logs, how to look at, view the dashboard, what the dashboard means. Those are all the, the kind of key pieces that are needed. So you're saying I need basic 
skill, computing operation skill. If I'm consuming, let's do a par comparable the model in which I would like to consume Kubernetes. VMware Cloud on AWS. Mm -hmm. Should I learn how to look at vSphere logs if I'm consuming VMware Cloud on AWS? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> that is VMware's problem. I'm, I'm paying VMware to run vSphere. Uh, if there's a log, if there's a problem in vSphere, what log benefits? So, lifecycle, let's not say lifecycle management, but from, to your point, I'm delivering a service for my business. Mm -hmm. Me as a provider to my business, not from consuming the infrastructure per se, but being able to ensure that the user experience and all that, the revenue stream is still coming in from a business model, I need to understand to some degree the logging, all the different components to ensure that that service is up, ready, functioning, and delivering. So when you're when you're when you plug your iPhone into the power outlet, you want to see the logs of the utility companies uh, delivering power to that circuit in your apartment I don't or building. Well, I, I don't yeah. want to play the log blame game. Yeah, I yeah. think that's. That's the issue that you run into with a managed service is if you are going to contact support and you know have a relevant ticket, it'd be nice to already have done some homework so when they ask you a question and yeah. maybe try to push it back that it's your application doing something weird, you can say, no, I've collected the logs, I've looked at it, my application is functioning normally, something's happening with the underlay that you're responsible for, go make it better. And at that point, they should go make it better. I don't need to troubleshoot that part of it for them, right. but, but I need to avoid that. Right you know what, I don't need Kubernetes. Kubernetes doesn't solve a problem that I have today, period. I can build, whatever you're telling me I can build in Kubernetes, I can go to AWS and go through the control panel and build it from the control panel in AWS. It's just a, Kubernetes is a different way to get to the same outcome. So draw for me a parallel at how you would troubleshoot a, uh, uh, AWS problem similar to how you're suggesting we troubleshoot a Kubernetes problem. Well, you absolutely collect logs in AWS mm -hmm. and analyze them. And when you contact support, that's one of the first things they ask for. So if you are building something on AWS and you need to get support and troubleshooting, you need those logs. I would say another layer of this is if you're designing an architecture to run on a particular platform, it's a good idea to understand how that platform functions. So if I'm building an AWS, I need to have an understanding of what's the plus and minuses of using S3 versus storing something in EBS. Should I use DynamoDB or should I use RDS? All things that are important to understand what the pros and cons are and how it functions. By the same regard, if I'm helping build something that's being deployed on Kubernetes, I have to understand how the container networking works. I have to understand how the storage components work. And does it make more sense for me to back this storage with an NFS mount, or should I be using some sort of direct disk? Should I use a local mount on the host? And what are the pros and cons of making all those different decisions? Let me pose a question to, to all of you. Have any of you, in all of your experience, running some kind of PaaS or SaaS or any kind of turnkey platform, run into an issue where you needed to contact support and they took care of everything without you having to roll up your yeah. sleeves and understand at least a little bit about the platform Never. that yeah. you were troubleshooting? So, let, let me ask the question. The, Consuming a service versus managing a service. Should I know how to manage Kubernetes? Should we? Should we know, even though it's a service being provided for us, a little bit about how yes. they're managing it? Yeah. Why? Uh, so just to give an actual example of how you might want to manage your Kubernetes cluster, uh, there's a concept of different node pools in Azure Kubernetes service. Mm -hmm. So if I have something that is reliant on GPUs, I might want to spin up a node pool that has those GPUs. How do I configure that node pool to only allow those containers that are flagged for GPU usage to go into that node pool? That's something I need to know how to do, and it's not something that Azure is going to take care of for me. So you need to know that today. In the future, at the mature Kubernetes, Kubernetes when I'm ready to consume it, should be like consuming Lambda. I should not know that I need to do that. The service behind should have an API that says, hey, you want GPUs? We'll take care of the clustering of GPUs, blah, 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 blah. I want to develop code. 
and, and I want an API. I want it to be as close to serverless as possible. Mm -hmm. That I don't want to do that today. I think it depends on your career aspirations too, because if you want a job that's like architect or senior architect or high, that is higher, you need to at least have a good understanding of the abstractions and to a degree have a, a, a good working knowledge of how those things work. You don't necessarily have to be able to, to build that cluster, but you have to, to Ned's point, understand exactly kind of how it functions and what the availability is to get to those, to get to those kinds of jobs. And to go back to my earlier question, what if the problem, if you face one, is not in the platform itself? Your developer said, I know I'm doing everything right. I've built this application to run on Kubernetes the way it's supposed to, but it's not working. Wouldn't some functional knowledge to be able to help troubleshoot this with the developer be necessary? So Absolutely. I think the, the challenge is, I think we're running to the problem. I don't like Kubernetes. <laughs> so the, the fact that I have to know this to use the platform is something I don't want to know. When, when I want to solve a business problem, if I choose Kubernetes, I'm choosing Kubernetes because that's the only way or the best way to solve the business problem. I haven't encountered a business problem that I can only solve with Kubernetes today. Okay, so regardless of the platform, isn't there always going to be a bit of back and forth between operations and development to be able to troubleshoot these Absolutely. issues? Absolutely. Regardless of the underlying. Absolutely. So, it's not really Kubernetes is, that's the problem, it's just the newest thing. Right. And yeah. so does that mean now that regardless of what the platform is, we need to have some functional knowledge, whether we like it or not. Right. So I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you, if you've made the decision that Kubernetes solves a business problem, you should learn Kubernetes. What I will tell you is that you shouldn't learn Kubernetes today because I haven't seen Kubernetes as a differentiator of how I solve problems the at least problems that I care about. Other people might care about different problems than I do, but I don't care about the problems that Kubernetes solves. So if you work for a cloud provider, you might. If I work for a cloud provider. Let's take the premise in a different direction then. Is it a waste of time to learn Kubernetes because it's not necessarily long for this world, it's just a fad? I think it's a fad. What happened to I think it's a fad from a, the, 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 what we get exposed to when it comes to Kubernetes. Right. Kubernetes will run cloud infrastructure, I have no desire to run cloud infrastructure. And, and, and to your point. Well, I mean, like, I mean, we all have heard the whole thing, right? I made the comment before about OpenStack. Now, we all did this six, seven years ago down the OpenStack path. Was there a need for it? It was all about providing cloud services on-prem, right? How many people actually did it? A lot in Asia. And how many, <laughs> and so, how many people com failed? Com Comcast, a lot of telecoms. Right, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? How many people failed? And Walmart. And right. A lot of people tripped over themselves. Exactly. Yeah. It Which, was very complicated to manage, right. AKA Kubernetes. I think the, cloud, I think the public cloud changes that, that prospect a lot though, because it's a lot easier to manage Kubernetes in the public cloud. And it is such a developer friendly platform and it does really solve a lot of development problems like right. managing library. That container solve, it's just container orchestration. Right. Uh, so I think public cloud makes that easy enough that it's a lot more approachable for a lot more organizations. And that's true, that is, that's a fair statement. Mm -hmm. But. But, is there a but? There's always a but. So, the, and it, so this again goes back to the problem that you're trying to solve. As I understand it, Kubernetes, you know, I, I love the, the managing libraries part of it. The, when I look at, at a path like Cloud Foundry and whatever, insert paths here, what OpenShift used to be, I'm not quite sure what it is today, but there were solutions to those problems. I think the great thing about Kubernetes is that developers like it uh, and, they, and they conform to it. Causes me problems on the back end as a operator because it's a difficult to manage platform. Yeah on my side. I'd rather manage, I'd rather lay passes on top of my existing infrastructure that solves the problems that Kubernetes solves from a developer perspective than to be forced to manage Kubernetes. Well, it, so I would say that Kubernetes is difficult to manage today because it's new and the learning curve can be somewhat steep. In the same way that if you were thrown into the world of vSphere, five years ago and had to learn everything and become an expert on vSphere in a few months, you can do it. It's a very complicated product with a lot of moving parts. VMware's done a great job of making it less complicated for you, 
but it's still a heavy learning curve and there's a lot of things moving on, moving underneath it. And that's part of the reason that they've introduced, you know, VMware Cloud on AWS. And now they're starting to introduce VMware as a managed service in your data center because they want to abstract away that complexity for you and let you get to actually delivering business value. And Kubernetes is following the same path, sometimes on vSphere. <laughs> so let's, let's go with that analogy for a bit. If, you know, vSphere is maturing to the fact where it's easier to learn, is there still value for those folks that got their vCDX in the past few years? No. And correlate that with, say, the Kubernetes folks that are mastering it now and will master it over the next few years. Is that mastery going to matter once Kubernetes reaches vSphere levels of simplification? No. I don't, I, I no. well, that's but, a whole but, different but, but at the same time, I'd say if, if you're, you know, you're certified in VMware, you've learned that whole paradigm. It's not a big shift to learn Kubernetes right. because conceptually so many things are similar. Functionally, a few things are different, but like right. the concepts are so, are so, from a computer science perspective, are fundamentally similar. It's just a different abstraction layer. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I absolutely think there's value in learning hard things because there's value in learning hard things. You learn how to learn and how to think and as a computer scientist. Kubernetes will definitely force you down that route. So if you're, if you're learning stuff new today, you know what? Go ahead, get Kubernetes the hard way, di dive in it. You will have learnings that will benefit you for the rest of your career. If you're mid-level in your career and you're, you're, you're seasoned and Kubernetes isn't being forced upon you, wait a couple of years and, make, and treat it like vSphere as if you were a dot vSphere today. Yeah. So I think what I'm hearing from everybody this, you know, if I ask you the question, is learning Kubernetes a waste of time? What, you're all going to say either yes or no, followed by, but it depends. Of course. So I think the answer is, is learning Kubernetes a waste of time? Is yes, no, but it, it depends. So we're going to wrap this up. We started with Keith, so we're not going to end with you. We're going to go back down this way. So final thoughts from you, Keith. So Kubernetes is worthwhile learning if it adds business value to your business today. If it doesn't, wait until it's mature. Kubernetes is a, a good path forward. And remember, it's not about your business, it's about your career. And you're, you alone are responsible for managing your career. I, I, I'm on both sides of the fence, obviously, but I would say Kubernetes, learning Kubernetes is definitely worthwhile to some degree to understand, to ensure that what you're getting is going to provide what you expect for business outcomes. I would say that you should definitely learn about Kubernetes and the degree and depth to which you learn is going to be highly dependent on where you are in the hierarchy of your organization. So a CIO needs to know a certain amount, whereas the person down at the bottom who's actually managing the bits needs to know a lot more. But all of those people should at least be moderately aware of what it is and what the capabilities are. There you have it. Happy learning, CIOs and operators alike. Thank you for listening to the On-Premise IT Roundtable. If you enjoyed the discussion, remember to subscribe, rate, and review the show on iTunes since that really helps our visibility and share the show with your friends. This podcast was brought to you by gestaltit.com, your home for IT coverage from across the enterprise. For show notes and more episodes, go to gestaltit.com slash podcast. Thanks. We'll see you next time.